I want to say good evening to this huge ceiling <laughs> mass of people. So thank you all very much for coming. My name is Martin. I'm obviously with Rossi and Russell. And we are very pleased, very privileged to have Shane Cotton with us tonight. He's done this extraordinary, beautiful show, really. Beautiful is not um, a word given lightly. Um, it carries lots of um, weight. But this is a, a body of work I feel is strong, it's very concentrated, and, and there's a poetic resonance which is also unsettling as well. And it's work which is unusual to the English eye anyway. Um, it's showing us uh, elements of uh, an approach which are strange to somebody like myself. And it's a, in a way it's a privilege to be able to see the work. And actually it's been a great privilege to come to understand the work in some way through the creating of the catalogue and through the hanging of the show. Um, hopefully this evening um, the conversation will shed some more light on, on the work and on shame. Um, we're also very privileged to have, have Nick here who um, will be, I better say, pumping shame. It sounds wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's pumping, pumping shame. Yeah, it's, it's, not it's, it's not the best <laughs> word. No, I was saying earlier no, yeah. certain words have a certain resonance and a weight, and it's not really the right one. But we're engaging with Shane in that, in that well, I hope it'll be a, an invigorating uh, discussion. Um, if perhaps during the conversation you feel like you want to say something, then, then wave your hand at me and say something. At the end, there'll be obviously a chance to ask questions. Anyway. So, thank you very much. So I didn't say it's Nicholas Thomas. I just said Nick. <laughs> That's all right. Um, well, Kia ora, welcome everyone. Um, this is, um, um, well, um, quite a privilege for me. Uh, um, I started research on um, contemporary art, um, cultural history, colonial history, a whole set of issues in New Zealand um, almost um, 20 years ago. And um, at the time I um, began that work, um, Shane was... Um, well, one of the most exciting of a group of then emerging artists who um, the, the early 90s seemed to be a, 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 actually a, a particularly fertile kind of moment with all sorts of unprecedented things going on in New Zealand art at the time. Um, I was impressed by his work for all sorts of reasons um, because, of, because of the way it engaged issues about indigenous identity and colonial history and so on and so forth. But I think I was above all impressed by the, the works themselves, which um, really just um, blew me away. I think many people found them tremendously impressive as objects, as paintings um, that had great virtuosity, um, were very different to um, any other paintings that seemed to be around at the time. And I think I wanted to start just by asking you about um, um, about the paintings as objects, how you make them, um, you know, yeah. what what your approach to the to the craft of painting is. Tuatahi kikini koru, baki na tana kato, baki na tana kato kato. Yeah. Right. Um, I thought, you know, like, it's, a, it's always hard um, to try and, you know, you're sitting around your work and you're trying to work out, you know, where do you sort of start in terms of discussing it. And I always find a good place to start is actually um, just really sort of discussing the process in terms of how it's actually made. Um, and one of the things I sort of, one of the things I try and do, well, I'm sort of interested at the moment in terms of how I make work, is that I want to try and make it as um, um, as economically as possible in the sense that uh, you know I get the I get the canvas delivered to my studio uh, comes with the right you know, it's, it's obviously been primed with the white ground uh, the first thing I do is I put down the black ground um, which is just like a black primer um, and. You know, I don't do too much to that, and then um, take out an airbrush, um, 
and then just start laying down the, the, the imagery uh, with the airbrush. Um, and what I find is it, it's kind of a, it's quite a, cool, it's quite a cool technique because um, it's either going to work or it ain't going to work. And if it doesn't work, then I go back to the beginning point and now it comes the black brush and it, and, it, and it just start again. But I, I sort of, the paintings I was doing previous to this and the ones that um, Nicholas was just referring to, uh, I was painting in oil and the, they were quite sort of, um, they were quite sort of labour intensive. And there was a kind of a, not to say that I was a, um, 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 you used the word sort of, what's the word you used? Um, Virtuosity? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't use that word to sort of describe what I was doing with them, but they were all paintings and they took a lot of time and there was a lot of sort of preparation that was involved in them. Um, and I've sort of got to the point in my career now where, um, you know, I just like to um, speed the whole process up. And, and get the images get the images presented in front of me to see whether they're going to work or they're not going to work. And if they're not going to work, the, the great thing about acrylic, uh, for me anyway at the moment, is that I can completely obliterate it and start the process again. I can go, I can come in in the morning um, and have this illusionistic landscape, um, landscape skyscape by 3 p.m. on the same day, and then I can really start sort of adding imagery. Um, you know, on, onto that surface. So, um, you know, I sort of, uh, and I like the kind of, I like the quickness, I like the kind of, there's a sort of, a, um, there's a, there is a sort of an intuitive uh, thing that happens in the work uh, to a point. And, you know, I, I sort of, I like um, Chuck Close, in an interview recently I was watching, said a, a thing about, um, you know why? Why? What? You know what was it about painting that appealed to him? And it was really about this kind of the, the simplicity and the materials. You know, there's it's a couple of sticks which have a cloth wrapped around it, and then you just apply this coloured dirt to make these kind of um, you know to make these things which sort of um, become objects in a sense. That, that that and they become quite loaded and heavy. But there's a kind of a I like the sort of economy in terms of how you achieve that. I don't know what, I don't really know, <laughs> I don't really know what that's about, but it kind of like turns my wheels in terms of making art, you know. Um, and actually, the whole process of painting for me is really about that kind of um, uh, being able to sort of manipula manipulate the paint, um, be it with a brush or air gun, um, and sort of coming up with these images. That um, that sort of surprised me in some ways, you know. It's it's kind of like it's an unknown, which I quite that's what I'm sort of drawn to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just to talk briefly about sort of where you started and where you've arrived at. Um, the the early works were very explicitly historical. I mean, you 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 mobilised some wonderful imagery from 19th century Maori figurative painting, from the <coughs> experiments that um, Maori artists engaged in with you know, new kinds of imagery and technique, and you use those, um, some of those motifs along with all sorts of others to, to um, as I understood it, engage with the whole cross-cultural process and, and the impact of colonization and you know, what Maori did with it and all that sort of thing. And um, I'm just wondering, um, is that um, these works don't have those historical references, at least obviously, but um, are, they, um, are they still concerned with history and that whole colonial experience, or are they concerned with the past and memory in, in <coughs> sort of more um, elusive kinds of ways? Yeah, they've, they've kind of, when I did those early works, I mean, um, the, they what the thing what 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 actually interested me in terms of the the the, um, the history sort of aspect that you're you're talking about, I I kind of discovered um, some Maori painters at the turn of the century who were making images that weren't recognisably Maori. They they were kind of they they were they were images that really sort of borrowed on a lot of 
uh, European modernity. And that sort of struck, I, I was really fascinated by it because they, there were parts and elements in the paintings that they were making, which were Māori, but then they were kind of saying something that wasn't necessarily traditional, you know, and that kind of struck a chord with me. So I actually wanted to, um, in a way it kind of gave me licence to actually explore things that, you know, it didn't have to sort of shy away from that which was new. Um, because, you know, I didn't actually know much about it. I didn't have a great sort of, I, I didn't have, I came from a background that wasn't sort of customary in the Murray sense. Um, and so it was kind of like, it provided a kind of pathway for me to sort of negotiate, you know, um, aspects of New Zealand history and, um, you know, the whole idea about colonisation, what actually post-colonisation was. But I didn't actually, people say to me, you know, those are history paintings, but the, my, it's my sense of history. If you, if, if you looked at those paintings, you know, I can't describe those paintings as being historical documents because they're all wrong. <laughs> they're wrong in the sense that I kind of um, f um, had some factual material in there, but I also had fictional material in there. And sort of, I changed things a wee bit, so I kind of played with history in that, in that respect. But of course, um, um, you know, and, and that kind of gave me a style, it gave me a sort of concepts and ideas, and um, it allowed me to sort of investigate all that kind of theory, and it captured a moment in time, um, at that period, you know, the early 90s, we were sort of, we, we were a wee bit niggly with each other, and, and so my work was kind of polemic in that sense. But, um, but this work here now is more just really very, very personal reflections on, on you know, ideas about spirituality, uh, Maori European combinations of spirituality, um, you know, what, what sort of Maori words mean to me. Um, um, and, 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 you know, I'm not sort of... Uh, they're really just kind of personal statements rather than sort of historical documents. Although they, although they have a kind of a... Um, they have an anchor in history, but, um, you know, hopefully... I want them to be sort of something else, really. You know, I want them to sort of go beyond that and just be pictures. Uh, there's a question coming up. <laughs> I just really... And really noticing, like in Colin McCarthy's work, it's all yes. about horizons everywhere yeah. and the landscape, and it's kind of like the earth is something different in general, but there's not a horizon to be seen in this oh. work, and yet there's a real resonance with the spirituality and some of the themes of that. Right, right. Sorry. No, I mean, the horizon, the, the, the whole, yeah, no, that's a good point. I mean, the horizon thing, and um, it's a feature, and um, I mean, you know, we, uh, you don't have to travel too far in New Zealand before you re reach the beach. Yeah. You know, you don't have to go too far before you can see the sea. And, um, you know, I think it's just, it's a, uh, the works like Colin McCann's are actually just a reflection of that place, what it is to be there. Um, you know, there's no sort of landscapes in these works per se. Oh, no, that's not true, it's what faces that. But, um, no, if you ever, if you ever right. yeah, obviously, you know, if you, if you sort of, you have the sky in front of you, you know, it's, there's got to be something, that, you know, that the land's just slightly beneath it, it's not like it's, um, uh... I, like, I really like it, because it's like you've found a new space, it gets easier and easier, and ownership of history. Right. Vision. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I um, can I ask you about what these sort of skies, skyscapes bear, you know, I, I mean, they're obviously very um, um, portentous, there's a bit of a sense of, you know, impending trouble, um, mm. um, but um, I can see there's a lot, I mean, there's a lot in them too, not least in terms of, you know, what's, what's written over them. Um, well, the, th the thing is, um Quite often what happens in painting is, in the way I work, is that you do one work and then that one work you do leads into another work and then along the way you sort of have little accidents and things happen. 
And really what's happened, the whole Skyscape thing really has become like a, um, it's really a device in a sense that I'm just kind of utilising. You know, it's, if, I, if, I, if I lay down a Skyscape, I can really bring images forward, you know, and um, I can make them brooding, you know, I can make the whole thing. It has all that kind of uh, um, a feeling that, that, that sort of goes with a sort of like a, on a cloudy day, I suppose you could say. But, um, you know, so I'm really just sort of uh, going along for the ride in terms of that. But what I've found is, um, you know, I, I think about things in a different way too. So you make the skyscape, and then straight away I sort of, and I started putting words on it. And I thought about the idea, well, um, that's kind of like a very sort of disrupt, it's really sort of disrupting the space because the one way to think about it is, you know, you describe Rangindui, which is the sky.